One of the oldest mysteries, mulled by generations of deep thinkers, is the question of how the universe began. And we know a great deal about what happened. Science offers a compelling and solid narrative for a great deal of the story, but it's not complete. Let me recap what we know for sure. We know that the visible universe was once smaller and hotter and it's expanding. We know that there was a moment when the expansion began. We know that that moment was about 13.8 billion years ago. For over 50 years, we've known of the cosmic microwave background radiation, which is also called the CMB. The CMB is the earliest thing we can see in the history of the universe. In fact, it's the remnant afterglow of when the universe began. The CMB presents a picture of when the universe was about 400,000 years old, which is when the universe was about 0.003% its current age. If we equate my current age to the age of the universe, seeing the CMB is like seeing a baby picture of me when I was 14 hours old. Man, I was a cute baby. However, while the oldest thing we can literally see existed 400,000 years after the universe began, we actually know about the conditions in the universe much, much before that time. For instance, at the moment which we can see the CMB, the universe had a temperature of about 2,700 degrees centigrade. But the universe is expanding and cooling off. At even earlier times, the universe was hotter than that. While we can't see the universe when it was much hotter, we routinely recreate the conditions of the early universe in huge particle accelerators like the Large Hadron Collider in Europe. When we smash nuclei of lead together, the temperatures are as high as 7 trillion degrees centigrade. One has to be a little more careful about the definition of temperature when talking about the most energetic collisions ever made. But when the LHC is colliding beams of protons, researchers create temperatures last common in the universe when it was a tenth of a trillionth of a second old. That's 10 to the minus 13 seconds for the amateur scientist crowd. So these are all facts. If we define the moment when the expansion of the universe began to be time equals zero, we have hard data for times after 10 to the minus 13 seconds. That should impress the heck out of you. It still blows my mind, and that's what I do every day. But for all we know, there are still things we don't. For instance, there is that time period between time equals zero and 10 to the minus 13 seconds. Science doesn't know exactly what happened during that time, and we don't know about time equals zero and even less about what happened before that. On the other hand, not knowing everything is quite different from not knowing anything. We have some very informed thoughts. The most popular idea explaining both the expansion of the universe and uniformity of matter and energy is an idea which says that at a time of about 10 to the minus 36 seconds, the universe began expanding at speeds faster than light. Now you might think that this is impossible because you've learned that nothing can move faster than light, but that's not quite true. It's true that nothing can move through space faster than light, but there are no restrictions on how fast space can expand. Thus, this period, which is called the inflation period by the way, doesn't break any laws of physics. What would cause space to begin expanding so quickly? Well, on this, we only have an informed guess. In our current universe, we have four known forces called electromagnetism, gravity, and the strong and weak nuclear forces. Judging from what we know about the behavior of those forces, it looks as if at high enough energies, they merge to be a single force. This is kind of like how Isaac Newton realized that there is a single explanation for why things fall and the march of the planets across the sky. And that single thing is now what we call gravity. If all forces were once the same and they act differently now, then there must have been a time at which they became different. And one idea is that the thing that gave the energy to cause the universe to expand is when the strong nuclear force became different from the others. That's called a phase transition, and it's a perfectly reasonable idea. In case that idea is confusing to you, here's an analogy. Suppose you had a container that contained both air and water. 
If the temperature of the container is above the boiling point of water, the container will contain both air and water vapor. However, as the temperature drops to below 100 degrees centigrade, the water turns to liquid, while the air remains gaseous. At that temperature, two things that look the same suddenly look different. Now, you shouldn't believe in either inflation nor the idea that a single force starts looking like four forces is what caused the inflation to exist. But they both are quite reasonable conjectures, and they don't require physics beyond what we know to be true from observation. Indeed, both ideas are exactly consistent with known data. Okay, we haven't gotten to the moment where the universe began, but we're almost there. Let's recap what we do know. Assuming that no new physical principles arise at higher energies, we have time equals zero, followed by about 10 to the minus 43 seconds. Before 10 to the minus 43 seconds, the energies and temperatures are all so high that all known physics fails. None of our intuition from what we know now can apply during that time. From 10 to the minus 43 seconds to about 10 to the minus 36 seconds, the universe was expanding and cooling relatively slowly. At about 10 to the minus 36 seconds, the strong force became different from the others, which caused the visible universe to inflate from much smaller than an atom to something about the size of a grapefruit. The inflation period only lasted to about 10 to the minus 32 seconds. From that time to 10 to the minus 13 seconds, the universe continued to expand, but now it was coasting. After 10 to the minus 13 seconds, the expansion continued to coast, and that's the time where we finally have hard data. Everything after 10 to the minus 13 seconds is solidly known. Everything before that is speculation, albeit sensible speculation. Okay, so now, what was time equal to zero like? Well, since before 10 to the minus 43 seconds, all of our known physical laws fail, we don't know. Indeed, without a huge advance in physics, we can't know. So there's an admission for you. Science can tell you nothing about this time for sure. But that's okay. It's not a sin to not know something. It's only a sin to think you do when you clearly don't. However, what are some ideas? It turns out that there are a few. Certainly, all of the visible universe was much smaller than it is now. But the entire universe, including the parts so distant that we'll never see them, had to have been much bigger than the visible universe, at least 500 times bigger. Drawing a three-dimensional universe is hard, so I'll try to present the key ideas using a one-dimensional stand-in. Suppose that when the universe began, we represent the visible universe as this one-dimensional line with us at the center. If that's the visible universe, the smallest the rest of the universe can be is represented as the circumference of this circle. That's the smallest the universe could be compared to the visible universe. Now, the universe could be much larger than that. Indeed, the circle could be infinitely large, which means the universe effectively has no curvature and it's infinite. On the other hand, the universe could have been some squiggly shape. Science doesn't know and may never know the answer to that. So let's concentrate on the visible universe. It was very tiny. All of the matter and energy of the universe was squashed down to a size that is super incredibly microscopic. It wasn't zero size, that's a common misconception, but it was very, very small. What did the universe look like when it was so small? Remember that we know that the known laws of physics don't work back then, so nobody knows. We imagine that perhaps it looked like space-time does now, with matter and energy constantly appearing and disappearing. And that word space-time is important. It's also often misused when people talk about the Big Bang. That's because people hear that time slows down when gravity gets strong, which is certainly the situation when matter is compressed to such a tiny volume. But what really happens is that when a person not in a region of strong gravity looks at a person standing in a region of strong gravity, time seems to slow for the strong gravity person, at least from the weak gravity person's point of view. But for someone in strong gravity, 
time seems to continue in the usual way. Furthermore, it's often said that the Big Bang created space and time, and there is some truth to that. Certainly, the Big Bang expanded space and time, but remember that the theory of general relativity, along with all other known physics, doesn't apply before time equals 10 to the minus 43 seconds. So that means that statements about time not existing at time equals zero or before should be considered as suspicious. So what are considered to be reasonable ideas? There are a few, but always remember that these are really speculations. There are three. The first is that the universe always existed in a super compact state, like a taut bowstring. Then, using the same ideas that govern quantum mechanics, the universe transitioned into an expanding state, much like when an arrow is released. This is basically very similar to how nuclear decay works. That idea is a static one and requires that the universe existed forever, whatever time meant under those conditions. The other ideas require a less static environment, but are far more speculative. Suppose that there exists additional dimensions beyond the usual three of space and one of time. If that's the case, there may be existing different universes in those higher dimensions that we can't interact with. That's not so different from birds soaring in three dimensions when we must walk in two. If that's the case, then perhaps the universe we exist in now always existed, floating around in higher dimensions. Perhaps our universe crashed into another universe, and the impact energy is what caused our universe to heat up and expand. It's hard to imagine that we'll find an experimental signature that will confirm this conjecture, although scientists have had a few testable ideas. Then there's a third idea, which is called eternal inflation. Perhaps universes move like the blobs in a lava lamp, with blobs breaking apart and combining. In this idea, a universe existed and we butted off from it. Similarly, universes have butted off from our universe. In this idea, there is a constant creation of universe after universe, each from a parent universe. Again, it's hard to see how we would confirm this idea. Of course, you should remember that the bottom line is that we really don't know what happened at time equals zero, and certainly not before then. Furthermore, since we have no idea about the nature of the universe before 10 to the minus 13 seconds, and we think there is a time where known physics absolutely must break down, it's premature to even sound like we have an educated guess. After all, as my colleagues and I explore higher and higher energies, we may discover something that radically changes our current ideas. In that case, the data may point our thinking in a very different direction. Indeed, I'd be shocked if the final answer was what you might have read about in popular science literature. I wish I could have told you that science knew what the answer will be, but that would be a lie, and I'll never lie to you. We know a lot. I mean, we know a ton about how the universe got from a hot and dense state to where we are now, but we don't know everything. And it will take a long time and the efforts of thousands of scientists to get us closer to understand how the universe came to be. I mean, exploring the unknown and pushing back the frontiers of our current ignorance is what my colleagues and I do. In fact, if you'll excuse me, I think I hear the lab calling. Talk to you later. Okay, so that was a heady video. There was a lot in it, both what we know and what we don't. I hope you learned something, including the point that there's still a lot to learn. If you liked the video, please be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel, including clicking on the little bell icon. And, of course, share it on social media so all of your friends can learn a little more about physics. After all, and after this video, I'm sure you'll agree, physics is everything.